For as long as one can remember, Australia has been really lucky with its standards of living and a crazy good job market. But is the luck running out now? Sure, the country exports massive amounts of iron ore, coal, and natural gas. But are these export earnings enough for Australia to sustain itself? Now, the answer isn't as straightforward as you might think. From the outside, it seems like the economy is stable. But then why are Australians pushing for things like drastic tax reforms? Join us as we delve into the reality of Australia's economy, how it's been functioning, and what things look like in the future. In February, Chalmers, the treasurer of the country, talked about the challenges Australians were about to face with rising living costs. He had three strategies in mind, offering relief where possible, focusing on budget repair, and practicing restraint by avoiding unnecessary expenditures. The goal was to prevent a fourth R, recession, which was a very real possibility at that time. Their economic growth was expected to continue, even if it was at a slower pace. Private economists, however, held less optimistic views. In fact, Westpac further predicted that growth would stop entirely in the latter half of 2023. Then came September, and the data indicated an annual growth of 2.1%, with a quarter-by-quarter -quarter economic expansion of 0.2%. However, considering the growing population, per capita GDP shrank by 0.5%. Before that could happen, China, once a major consumer of Australian coal, imposed an unofficial ban amid political tensions. Officials emphasize that lifting this ban is crucial for rebuilding relations. Recent data reveals a notable rise in coal shipments from Australia to China, reaching 1.35 million tons by March 13, 2023, compared to 0.82 million tons the previous month. Inflation proved to be more persistent than expected, with the annual consumer price index easing to 5.4% by the September quarter. Despite economic uncertainties, the labor market remained robust. As of October, the jobless rate slightly increased to 3.7%, but new jobs kept pace with population growth. Australia's increasing population caught everyone by surprise, surpassing even the government's expectations. It grew by over 560,000 people in a year, which was a substantial 2.3% increase. This unexpected surge played a role in driving up inflation, particularly in rents and other areas of demand. Despite the Reserve Bank of Australia raising its cash rate, property prices continue to rise. But what else is tearing Australia's economy down? The country's tax system needs serious redoing. It's clear that it can't keep up with today's world of unpredictability, especially when large chunks of wealth are entirely exempted from taxation. This automatically puts more burden on income taxes, taken from the people of Australia, who definitely aren't happy about it. In order to bring reform, Labor suggested tax cuts that could return $359 billion over a decade to Australians, benefiting all taxpayers earning below $146,486. Those with an average income could then enjoy double tax relief, with middle income earners gaining $804, However, the proposal reduces the benefit for individuals earning over $190,000. Peter Dutton hasn't committed the opposition to a firm stance on Labour's tax cuts, while the government enters talks with the Greens and key independents. Anthony Albanese has planned discussions with crossbenchers to pass the updated tax cuts, with the Greens advocating for additional support for low-income earners. Rejecting calls for a fresh election, the Prime Minister simply says that the timing doesn't align. Albanese emphasized addressing cost-of-living concerns, questioning the coalition's stance. Speaking of the cost of living, there's another major crisis plaguing Australia as we speak. In the last five years, around 190,000 new homes were started annually. The HIA predicted that this will rise to nearly 200,000 per year for the next five years, falling just over a fifth short of the government's target. The growing population has led to a record of four people per new dwelling approval doubling the average density since 1985. The hope for a housing construction revival under the Albanese government is also fading, with December 2023 marking an almost a 10% drop in housing approvals from November. Apartment approvals plummeted by 25.3%, totaling about 162,200 for the year, the lowest since 2013. The Housing Industry Association predicts construction will further decline to 95,400 new houses in 2024, Despite soaring costs, the combined construction tally of 179,400 homes falls 200,000 short of the government's goal. A survey also indicated that construction costs are a major barrier, 
hindering the achievement of the government's housing targets. Housing prices are currently 10% to 15% higher than they were ever anticipated to be in 2022. But why is that? Sit tight, because we're about to find out what the main reason behind all this chaos is. Everything was running smoothly until the pandemic took over the world. And sadly, Australia wasn't an exception to that event's catastrophic impacts. In fact, this may have been the toughest time Australia had had in decades, leading it into the disastrous 2020 COVID recession. It was a big deal, both in how deep and how long it lasted. At this point, the economy took a hit like never before. Thanks to some strong moves with stimulus plans and a closed border strategy, the country managed to avoid the worst parts of the COVID crisis seen in other places. But did any of that help save the country? Surprisingly, the economy bounced back almost as quickly as it went down, making up for most of the losses in just a year. They had a bit of a setback with the Delta outbreak in 2021, but things picked up again and the economy came back strong. However, things weren't going to stay that way for long. Issues started to emerge and it became clear that Australia wasn't doing as well as everybody thought they were. While a robust job market usually signals economic growth, it's also a sign of trouble in today's world. This became evident in Australia as businesses were struggling with staff shortages all the time. About one third of small businesses and two thirds of medium and large businesses couldn't find enough staff. Now, when we dig into the reasons, it's straightforward. There's a shortage of available workers. 79% of businesses that are unable to hire blame a basic lack of applicants, and another 59% highlights a skills gap, a problem that intensifies when the job market is tight. But here's the big surprise that will leave you shocked. There are currently as many advertised job openings in Australia as there are unemployed individuals. Now, if this is something you never expected to learn, be sure to like and subscribe for more. The disruptions of these chains happened globally during the COVID time, and Australia finds itself way more vulnerable than any other country. But why is that? As an island nation, they face more logistical hurdles than almost any other country, coupled with a highly specialized economy heavily reliant on imports. If they have no raw materials, they can't make anything else. And so, they hit a dead end. Surveys across businesses revealed that supply chain disruptions, standing shoulder to shoulder with labor issues, significantly hindered their business activities. 41% of businesses across the board felt the impact, struggling to obtain essential goods or facing exorbitant prices. In retail and manufacturing, two-thirds were struggling with tangible effects. And to make matters worse, the supply chain quandary wasn't easing up either. In fact, it was intensifying. But along with it came another giant barrier in the way of Australia's economy. For the past two years, the world has witnessed a gradual buildup of supply chain pressures, followed by a sharp surge in energy and food prices triggered by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Because of that, Australia's inflation skyrocketed, reaching a historic 6.1% in the June quarter of 2022. To counter this surge, the central bank swiftly raised rates, jumping from 0.1% to 1.85% in just four months. The battle against inflation will persist until it retreats closer to the targeted 2-3% range, which doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon. Coupled with existing pressures on the supply side, such as labor and supply chain challenges, rising interest rates are now denting consumer confidence in spending. And this brings us to the greatest question you probably have in your mind. While it can't control the global upheavals going on around them, Australia can fortify its position to navigate existing and future shocks. And how will that happen? By properly identifying the areas where the problems lie. The aftermath of COVID has offered them an opportunity to reconsider vital aspects of their economy. First of all, the country has to find a way to bring skilled immigrants into the country so that they can swiftly become part of the workforce. Then comes the country's reliance on three commodities, coal, gas, and iron ore. This is risky, and to get itself to a better place, Australia needs new industries like lithium and green hydrogen. Productivity also needs a boost, focusing on innovation, skills, and universal digitalization benefits. Supply chain resilience is a growing issue, influenced by protectionism, geopolitics, and COVID policies. Addressing these areas is crucial for Australia's economic future. Only once these major issues are resolved could the country reach a stable point in its economy. And with this, we've reached the end of our video. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to check out these videos for more of these valuable insights.